Hey everyone, this is MOSFET, your simple tech news update. Starting off with some manufacturing news. We've seen a few 3D printed building projects over the past few years, but this is the first time I can recall seeing an autonomous bricklaying bot. The Hadrian X by FBR recently completed its first outdoor test for its next generation version of the system. This truck automatically feeds blocks into its telescopic arm and applies construction adhesive instead of mortar to quickly lay brick. This newest version can lay up to 500 bricks per hour, using blocks up to 45 kilograms in weight, and can construct walls up to three stories high from the roadside. In other news, YouTube user Dezacat showed off his custom-designed marionette-style 3D printer recently, making an informative video explaining how this unusual printer works. As the name suggests, it uses lots of strings and pulleys in lieu of the more common core XY aluminium extrusion designs. I wonder if you could make a super-tiny folding portable printer using a modified version of this technique. 3D Natives also just put out another 3D printing guide, this time focusing on the emerging area of silicone-based printing, which is starting to be used more widely for industrial and medical applications. It's a good quick read for a rundown on the technology, the limitations and the main manufacturers in the space. In other news, at a recent event for Adobe's upcoming products, research scientist Christine Dirk showed off Project Primrose, an interesting dynamically changing dress which can display content created using Adobe Illustrator and After Effects apps. There aren't many other details on this since it seems like a prototype just for the show, but they say that the technique could be used more widely in fashion and furniture designs. It reminds me of that BMW concept with changing skin I linked last year. Staying with electronics, and we all probably heard about the Raspberry Pi 5 being released the other week. Well, Orange Pi also recently unveiled the 5 Plus version of their boards, and this one comes with a whopping 32 gigs of RAM. It also has an 8-core 64-bit rock chip processor, external SSD support, dual LAN ports, 8K video decoding, and all the standard SBC features you'd expect. The boards begin shipping in November, and you can pre-order on AliExpress and Amazon for around $190. I have no idea whether it's any good, but it's cool to see such powerful tiny computers now. In virtual and augmented reality news, iFixit continue their good work, this time in tearing down the new MetaQuest 3 VR headset and controller. There's not that much technical info here, but it is a good overview, and I personally find it interesting to see how modern microelectronics are designed and assembled these days, along with all the tricks used to reduce device size. Senti AR providers of the Magic Leap Base Command EP system used by heart surgeons recently received its second FDA 510K clearance for the product, showing the growing trend of augmented reality technologies being used in real surgical theatres. The Command EP system integrates existing heart mapping data to create real-time 3D holographic views of patient anatomy, providing doctors an interactive way to precisely view what's going on. Researchers Keigo Ushiyama and Pedro Lopez have also been working on feet-through, an electrotactile feedback system for virtual reality. They argue in the paper that electric stimulation is much better than vibrations to increase immersion for users, and they created a method for adding this to a user's feet. A flex PCB filled with mini electrodes can fit over the foot, either as a sock or shoe insole, so when the user is walking over objects and textures in the virtual world, they can feel them underfoot. Another interesting application which they showed is direction assistance for visually impaired people, where the shoes basically draw directional arrows that the user can feel on the bottom of their feet. Switching to automation, and I thought this was an interesting story. Video game developer CD Projekt SA replaced the voice of deceased actor Mila Gost Retchek in the latest Phantom Liberty expansion for the Cyberpunk 2077 game. Interestingly, the company hired another actor to perform the role, then used the Respeacher app to modulate the voice so it sounded like Retchek. I think this definitely poses some ethical questions, and I'm sure it'll become a prominent topic for all entertainment in the future. In other news, and hot on the heels of Waymo expanding its service in San Francisco last week, Cruise have now announced that their own robo-taxi service is opening up to the public in Houston, Texas soon too. Have any of you actually tried one of these rides before? What was it like? In robotics, a new research paper by a team in Japan has been exploring the use of inflatable humanoid robots for interacting with people. It revolves around a central processing unit which acts as a brain and eyes, and includes a pump to inflate and deflate. Inside are a bunch of simple pulleys which allows it to nod its head and move its arms. The fabric also contains embedded sensors to recognise touch. Maybe it's me, but this type of cheap robot for human interfacing seems particularly soulless. Other researchers from Carnegie Mellon also released a paper showing how it's possible to enhance the capabilities of inexpensive, small quadrupeds so they can perform smooth, autonomous parkour-like actions using only a single forward-facing camera.
Existing capabilities for similar bots are generally slower, jittery, and are usually confined to predetermined obstacle courses, but this team says they have developed a single neural network and simulations that gives the quadruped the general foundational skills to face novel objects and environments. Quadrupeds aren't the only machines learning to navigate their environments more efficiently. Last week, researchers from NYU Tandon School of Engineering uploaded a paper on what they say is a new way to visually track targets using quadcopters. Their unifying foundation model works efficiently on limited hardware and can precisely detect a range of objects from humans to pigeons. They even have a nice and totally not terrifying shot of drones tracking humans running away from them. There will be no escape. And ending this week with a great project. Industrial designer David Edquilang has created the Lunet, a 3D printable prosthetic for partial hand amputees. The design is modular, so it can be adjusted for various amputee configurations, and it requires no metal fasteners, no adhesives, nor any special tools besides a 3D printer to assemble. David intends to open source the design files for the project soon to make it available to everyone. Alright, that's everything for this update. Subscribe to the channel for more cutting-edge news, or check out the MOSFET playlist. See you next time.